Welcome folks to Morning Worship, Peterborough Methodist Circuit, lovely to be with you today. As I'm sure is becoming familiar to us all, this is a recorded act of worship prepared earlier in the week, but it's no dress rehearsal for me. I will be worshipping and I understand that you'll be joining me later. Second Sunday in Easter today. Grateful to Maddie and David from Brookside who are sharing the readings. And Nick Drury is uh, offering our reflection for today. The picture you've got in front of you is Caravaggio, 16th century. And uh, yeah, morning all. Jesus appears to his disciples and as we shall remember today says peace be with you they're locked up for fear Thomas wasn't there first time round of course and uh, when told by the other disciples I'm not going to believe until I place my hands in Jesus's wounds and so there you go partly gory partly amazing picture for this Sunday as we continue to grapple with the reality of the resurrection. We've just got under two minutes to go, it's just we allow uh, people to gather. Don't forget our administrator will be there in the background to rally you all. And don't forget those prayer requests in the comments section. Always welcome what other time, whatever time you manage to watch. I know so if you've had the opportunity to join with us for morning prayers this week, it's been a wonderful, good week once again. Uh, in terms of our introduction to worship, we have our familiar territory, the opening of the live stream, the video with the helpful people things have said about how live streams encourage them. We have a new video reflection that we've been showing called Graves Into Gardens, a monologue. And uh, then we remember we're in a new season and we begin worship with a prayer, a prayer called, or remembering that God's calling us out to spread the message, to invite people to discover the difference that the Christian faith can make to our lives. I'll see you shortly folks. Once again, great to have you with us. Welcome to Morning Worship.
It was Friday afternoon, and Jesus is dead. His brutalized body hanging without life on a cross dropped into a hole in the dirt. His executioners had dug the holes, prepared the place, and done their job with ruthless efficiency. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. The hope of mankind overcome by powers of hell, by the shadow of a grave. We once knew what it was like to rule and reign on the earth. We were made to live in the light, in relationship, in purpose. We were made for more than what we've come to accept as normal. Ever since the garden, Satan and his kingdom have been tightening their grip. Darkness has ruled evil, chaos, suffering, hopelessness. We've been enslaved and crippled by the holes the enemy has been digging for us too. But instead of killing the Messiah, the cross became a catalyst for salvation. The hole that was dug to hold an instrument of shame and death was instead filled with an instrument to bring healing and new life. That's the way God is. Nothing is impossible with him. He's always restoring, always renewing, always able to take what was meant for evil and turn it for good, to take our graves and turn them into gardens. Why? Because he never gave up on his plan. He has never given up on us. He knows what we don't, that you can't have resurrection life without death, Jesus. He died so we can have lives of purpose and power over the grave. He is not dead. He is alive. And because he lives, we can live again. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In case, just in case you missed it first time round, I'm going to say it again. And I invite me uh, to say uh, he is risen. Hallelujah in your hearts or even out loud wherever you are. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Wonderful to see you. Thank you for joining us for this uh, live stream recorded worship. And as I said per the intro, this is not a dress rehearsal for me. I am engaged in an act of prayer, an act of worship. And uh, we're joined by others as well who've prepared, who've offered themselves uh, through uh, preparing readings. Uh, so thanks for to David and Madeline from Brookside who are offering our readings for today and to Nick Drury who will bring uh, our reflection. So it's wonderful to come uh, with you. I am beginning an act of worship here and my understanding is that simply you will be joining me afterwards. So whatever time you are viewing this, whether you catch up and it's right back on bang on the dot, 10.30 on Sunday or even later on the Sunday, welcome. It's great to have you with us. And don't forget to put those prayers in the comments section. We're going to begin with uh, an opening prayer. And uh, once again, we focus on the glory that is before us, the risen Christ. So glory to you, O God, you raised Jesus from the grave, bringing us victory over death and giving us 
eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation. You overcame death and opened the gate to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit. You lead us into the truth and breathe new life into us. And glory to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, this day. Amen. We're going to continue our worship as we join together and we sing, Open up the heavens, we want to see you. And it's just wonderful, isn't it, to remember, to refocus our lives around the truth of the resurrection. But it's also true to say that we don't always show it as a people, do we? I mean, it's understandable sometimes if we're going through great difficulty. We can understand that the Lord can be with us and even we can, we can be so impacted by perhaps a, a, a grief that we're facing that we, we feel blunt to emotion and sensing what's happening around us. We, we know a story about that, don't we? We think about last week and Mary at the tomb not recognising uh, who Jesus was and also the, the angels who are there just seem to pass her by. You know, she's so struck in grief. But, but yes, if, if we're honest, we don't necessarily 
register and take fully on board the revelation, the good news that Jesus is risen. And dare I say it, there are times when some of us look more like we've been to the dentist when we leave church than actually we've uh, been through something far more exciting. But years of experience in ministry have told me that looks can be deceiving. You never quite know what's going on in the inside. And sometimes you can you can ask if somebody's all right and, and they might say, oh, I'm feeling uh, a little bit low or they might actually say no 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 I'm just really thinking about that point <laughs> you know so but it's important yes that we come before God and we acknowledge uh, the glory of the resurrection but we also acknowledge how we need to turn our lives more to that and allow his light to fill us and so we move on now to what may well be familiar prayers uh, to you they're from the Methodist worship book we had them last week but they're nonetheless powerful but we will also share in a collect and a collect for the second Sunday in Easter and so when I say Lord forgive us we all respond Lord forgive us if we have fallen into despair Lord forgive us if we have failed to hope in you, Lord, forgive us. If we have been fearful of death, Lord, forgive us. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord, forgive us. May the living God raise us from despair, give us victory over sin, and set us free in Christ. Amen. And as we continue with our colleague set for today, uh, this uh, prayer reflects one of the readings that we're going to look at, which is Jesus appearing to his disciples behind locked doors. They've locked themselves away for fear. Uh, but the person who's not there is Thomas. And he, of course, says, I'm not prepared to believe and, unless I see the wounds for myself and place my hands in them. And, uh, well, Jesus comes back. Uh, but Thomas is perhaps rather unfairly remembered as doubting Thomas. I'm, I'm sure that he had strengths. It wasn't just all about doubting, but uh, this uh, prayer remembers perhaps those who struggle with doubts this day. So, Faithful God, the strength of all who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And another prayer, a video prayer that's become familiar to us, uh, is something called God's calling us out, or God calling us out. It, it fits well as we just reflect on how we're able to honour our calling and live uh, as people. Uh, that can hold that, bear that name, disciple, with integrity. Uh, I offer that prayer to us now as we remember um, how God is calling us to perhaps move out of our comfort zones and to engage with others and to encourage people and be encouraged by other people, particularly as we help folks discover the difference that the Christian make can, faith can make to our lives. Let us pray, each and every day. Let us pray as a way to say that we don't believe that life is somehow meaningless, feelingless, healingless. And you're welcome, whatever you're dealing with. But what if there is a great big unless, just waiting for a fearless few to leave behind the pew talk to the folks in the checkout queue who knew they are ready to listen anew to hope along with you so open up and listen out it's time to get out and about God's calling you out and about God's already out and about
This is not about standing on the corner to shout or sandwich boards or hordes of people flooding in on Sunday. It's about having a fun day. <laughs> Celebrate together, whatever the weather. Welcome the stranger, not because you wish to change her, but simply discover she's an angel. So, open the doors, because it's been too long since we opened the doors. The hinges are rusty, but the people are thirsty, oh so thirsty, for the spirit of God. It's not so big, oh so scary. We can all pray, we can all say hi to the guy next door, because it's where the story starts. So open your hearts and take the good news out and about. Oh, that video grows on me more and more as I look at it and pray through it, the idea. I think the idea that I like about that is that there are small steps, seemingly sometimes insignificant to us, but, you know, there might be, it might be a case that we need to make the effort to get out there more, but there's, there are more steps in our everyday lives and us being responsive uh, to make a difference, a huge difference to somebody else's uh, life. As we move on in our worship, we're going to uh, join together in uh, another uh, another song it's open the eyes of my heart <laughs> Open the eyes of my heart. Amen. We've reached a point now where we are going to look at two readings set for today. We're going to look at the reading from John's Gospel, 
as I said earlier, that's uh, the appearance of Jesus behind locked doors and also the appearance to Thomas who returns and Jesus bestowing peace on uh, the disciples who are in fear. Uh, who He bestows peace on them whenever he uh, sees them. And then uh, David will be reading from Acts chapter 5 verses 27 to 32. Uh, this is where the apostles are called to account by the authorities of the day but insist that it's important that we follow God's lead and uh, not a lead where we're looking to preserve just our own human you know way of life uh, so to speak. You'll you'll be able to to grasp more once we've heard the reading but I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll play these back in succession and then we'll move out of those readings and we're going to sing together, Lord, I lift your name on high. So thanks in advance to Madeline and uh, David. Good morning. The reading today is for John chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood before them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were so overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not, the was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, and Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Acts chapter 5 verses 27 to 32. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as Prince and Saviour, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Lift. 
lift your name on high Lord I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from here I love that hymn. It's just a just a wonderful, simple way. It's this creedal truth in a statement about um, uh, how Jesus uh, came to earth to show the way. Um, we move on now, and uh, we're going to turn and we're going to hear Nick Nick Drury's uh, message for us today. But I thought it might be nice um, to pray for Nick. He's obviously prepared uh, his uh, message, and so Lord, we thank you for Nick. We thank you for his ministry. We thank you for his willingness to share and to record uh, his message so that uh, you might encourage people who are unable to get to church or need further encouragement. Uh, we thank you for him and we thank you for the blessing that he is for us. We pray for him and we pray for his family this day. And we thank you especially for his work at uh, Whittlesea as a trustee and uh, for his work within churches together in Whittlesea and districts in uh, particular and in so many other ways. We pray for all of our local preachers this morning, Lord, wherever they are, that your blessing would be with them, guiding them, especially those who are out preaching at this time. And we pray for our worship leaders in churches as well, that your blessing would be with them too. Amen. Thank you, Nick. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be sharing worship again with you this morning. The love of the resurrected Jesus in our lives. Jesus does not want us to doubt the miracle of his risen victory of life conquering death. And the message that I bring this morning is that even death could not separate or cut Jesus off from the eternal loving relationship with his Father. This, this is the wonderful, truthful message of Easter that we need to continually, continually remind ourselves of. That nothing that we experience in this life and beyond will ever separate us from our loving Heavenly Father. This is certainly shown in the narrative of the Gospel passage from John chapter 20, verses 19 to 30. In this resurrection encounter, we see just how lovingly patient, patient Jesus is in gently revealing himself to a confused, perplexed and, dare I say, mourning bunch of people. They believe their great leader, their teacher, their hope for the future had been taken away from them. It would seem that they, that they did not understand or take on board Jesus' teachings of what would happen towards the end of his life on earth and that this was all in God's great plan, God's great salvation, salvation plan. It had been foretold centuries before by the prophets of old of his death and resurrection and he had talked openly about what would happen to him on a number of occasions. 
the disciples did not take on board or didn't understand or simply believe that Jesus would rise from the dead, even though the two Marys had witnessed the resurrection at the tomb. But despite their confusion and disbelief, Jesus is still patient, loving and kind. Peace be with you, he declares. He empathises, he understands their human confusion and doubts. Maybe they even feel betrayed, left alone. All the promises of a new world, a better, more fulfilling and safer way of life, may all have been a complete lie. But Jesus comes back to them in person and gently reassures he shows them the torture wounds on his hands and sides. It is truly their Lord and Master resurrected to them, and what joy fills their hearts. Once again comes Jesus' gentle and loving reassurance. In verse 21 we read, Peace be with you. And then, comes the great commandment from the risen Christ. As the Father sent me, so I send you. The disciples had spent three years following and being taught and encouraged by Jesus. They had now been witnesses to the culmination of God's great plan. Jesus, God's Son, had indeed risen from the dead. Man's eternal separation from God through sin had been done away with. Death had been defeated. All that the disciples had received and been witnesses to had to be passed on. Jesus was commanding them to do so. And what's more, he was going to send God's Spirit to empower them to do this great task. In verse 22 and 23 we read, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What Jesus had been given the power and authority to do, the disciples were given the same authority. But unfortunately, there was one of the 12 disciples who was not present at this encounter with the risen Christ at first, Thomas. I don't know about you, but I think Thomas gets a bit of a bad press over his doubting. As we know, his name is synonymous with the sceptic Doubting Thomas. But I'm sure that the rest of the group were just as traumatised as Thomas over the death of Jesus. And if they too had not seen the risen Christ, then they too may have thought that everything was all over. The horrific flashbacks that Thomas may have had over the striking of the crucifixion nails and the thrust of the spear featured in his angry reply to the happy and excited disciples. In verse 25 we read, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. I wonder whether Thomas was angry with the rest of the group because he felt they weren't facing the reality of the situation. That they were in some kind of manipulation and not prepared to face the gravity of the truth. To him, they were encouraging each other in some weird cloud nine experience that he couldn't share and perhaps did not want to. Again, 
Jesus shows his gentleness and kindness and he is fully aware of Thomas's lonely struggle and speaks to him directly when he appears to the disciples that second time. He knows the significant proof that Thomas requires and he offers his wounds for inspection. Thomas is wracked with guilt because of the misunderstanding and doubt and confesses, my Lord and my God, a true statement of his newfound faith and belief. John, in this gospel passage, recognises the struggles of faith and belief that many disciples have in the resurrection. By recalling Jesus' statement in verse 29, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And so far from being hungry, frustrated and fed up with his chosen band of disciples who he found cowering with disbelief and confusion, he gently returns to reassure and grant them his peace. He picks them up and once more confirms his belief in them to be witnesses to God's great plan of love and redemption. He gives them the same authority and power of the Holy Spirit that was given to him by his heavenly, fa his heavenly Father. And this was shown in the lives and witnesses of the Acts of the Apostles. As we read an account in Acts chapter 5 verses 27 to 32. Acts chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. Now in the previous verses to this passage of scripture, we read that the apostles' experience of the power of the Spirit of the risen Jesus in their lives, just as Jesus had promised and breathed into them. This power enabled and gave them authority in the name of their risen Lord, to do great miracles of healing and great boldness in preaching. In verses 15 and 16 of that chapter, we read that as a result of all this, many people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he passed by. Crowds gathered also from towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by impure spirits, and all of them were healed. It was the tangible, loving healing of God's Holy Spirit through the disciples that attracted new believers. Such happenings confirmed the truth of the Apostles' teaching and revealed the crucified and risen Christ now within and through his followers. The powerful love of God, once throwing, flowing through one man, is now flowing through his disciples. And as more people come to know and receive the power and forgiveness of the risen Christ, flowing through them also, it's like... A chain reaction. It is as a result of all that was happening that the apostles were brought before the Sanhedrin, as we heard from the epistle passage from Acts chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. The Sanhedrin were the high council of the leaders of Israel. The disciples' increasing popularity and following of the people was challenging their authority and threatening their secure high religious positions. What added to the anger was the fact that the apostles were pointing out that it was the religious leaders who 
orchestrated Jesus' crucifixion and death. For we read in verse 28, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name, they said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are deter determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. The reply that Peter and the apostles give to the authorities as to why they are respectfully teaching in Christ's name is simply that they are, are that they are obeying and being moved by the power of the risen spirit of Jesus. They are simply giving witness to what they have heard, seen and received and taking on the authority given to them to heal and forgive sins by the Holy Spirit's power. In verse 32 we read, we are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The disciples do show respect and try to live life in peace with everyone. However, conflict with the world and its authorities may happen. God's truth and way of life may, may be at odds with other people's attitudes. But we are encouraged to trust and obey God's word. If you recall in Luke chapter 6 verse 22, Jesus says, Blessed are you when people hate you when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. So what does the truthful message of Easter mean to you? What influence does it have on your life? Do you, be, do you believe that Christ was crucified and raised to life for the salvation of humanity? Do you believe in the risen Christ who brings the love of God by his Holy Spirit in our lives today to comfort, help, guide and support us? I think it's important for us to consider what the cross and resurrection means to us because society and our communities, communities need to hear the gospel message. What are we going to do with what we have seen heard and experienced. When God's word is opened and considered, it demands a response. We turn to John chapter 20, verse 21. We read, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. Jesus gently comes alongside and reminds us of the power of his resurrected spirit in our lives. We are all called into discipleship and have the spirit's authority to love and act in his name. Jesus is saying, my mission is your mission. Amen. A big thanks to, to Nick there. I have to be honest, I don't pre-listen. I'm always listening like you as, uh, you know, as part of the congregation, uh, as if I were leading worship and then somebody else were preaching. You know, I'm listening and attentive, but so encouraged by that. I think a really fresh view for me, the understanding that Jesus doesn't just bestow peace, you know, peace be with you, that Jesus bears peace when he could actually be really upset at the lack of faith in the disciples to 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 have faith and believe that he would indeed be risen from the dead um as as he as he as he predicted and there are times elsewhere in the gospel where he's clearly frustrated with the disciples and there's times certainly where he has been unrelenting in his criticism and deliberately and, and uh, pointing out uh, forensic in his his criticism of of people but for the disciples He's not. He's so gentle. He's full of grace and peace. And so that was a really refreshing thing. I've not sort of looked at it uh, that way. Um, 
uh, and so thanks to Nick for that. And then the other angle on Axe, I was very interested to see what Nick was going to do with Axe. It's quite a challenging uh, passage, but he spoke, yes, of religious leaders, not of the Jews, but the religious leaders of the day. Of course, that's a really important kind of uh, dis distinction to make because we also, we are of, you know, we, we are, they, the Jewish people are our ancestors as well. And we want to avoid any kind of accusation of uh, anti-Semitism, but Nick rightly points to the Jewish leaders of the day. But the angle for him was that previous to Acts, that the people of God had been stirred by the Spirit and given them boldness. And then he, ang he links that together, doesn't it? And so what are we going to do? What are you going to do? What am I going to do in response? So thank you uh, to, to that, Nick. And uh, my mission is your mission. Mm, interesting. Uh, very helpful more than interesting really helpful so i pray those words speak to you don't forget to say thanks to nick in the comments section it means a great deal uh, to us as preachers once if we hear that people are stirred if there's any other phrases that jump to mind do please pop them in um, the comments section as we encourage each other and uh, moving on uh, i thought it might be uh, helpful for us to uh, remember the song over all the earth asking god to reign in us and then we'll join together and remember our prayers for others. And I searched out some prayers from the Iona We Worship book, the Red Book here, which we used at the beginning of lockdown, in fact, but haven't turned to. Uh, there's some meaningful phrases here. God is strong. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. And truth is stronger than lives, uh, than lies. And then also some quite poignant prayers, uh, remembering. Um, those in authority are leaders and those who hold the key positions in finance and industry. And uh, so feel free latterly to, to add to these prayers that I, I bring in the comments section, but uh, I lift those to you. So in the meantime, we listen to Over All the Earth. So we join in our prayers for others. Well, um, we're going to remember how um, God brings uh, deliverance to us. I'm using the prayers from uh, the uh, uh, the We Worship book, and I've just managed to uh, lose my place. Isn't that excellent? How did I manage to do that? No idea. Let's just flick through and uh, just find out, because I did find prayers that were really, um, really helpful. Here we are. Yes, there we go. It's actually Morning Liturgy B uh, from the We uh, Worship book. And uh, 
the first is an opportunity to affirm that um that god wins that god wins and that light is stronger than darkness so let us pray because you made the world and intended it to be a good place and called its people your children because when things seemed at their worst you came in christ to bring out the best in us so gracious god we gladly say goodness is stronger than evil love is stronger than hate light is stronger than darkness truth is stronger than lies and if you haven't already i'd encourage you to repeat those lines after me or to write them in the comments section because confusion can reign inside us despite our faith because anger tension bitterness and envy distort our vision because our minds sometimes worry about small things and worry small things out of all proportion and because we do not always get it right we want to believe goodness is stronger than evil love is stronger than hate light is stronger than darkness truth is stronger than lies because you have promised to hear us and are able to change us and are willing to make our hearts your home we ask you to confront control forgive and encourage us as you know best Then let us cherish in our hearts that which we proclaim with our lips. Goodness is stronger than evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger than darkness. Truth is stronger than lies. Lord, hear our prayer and change our lives until we illustrate the grace of the God who makes all things new. Amen. And we move on in our prayers uh, for others. These pray these prayers resonating with me this morning. They speak about those who walk the corridors of power. And we pray for our leaders, and we aware about our desire that our leaders would be good role models. As party gate rolls on, of course. In the parliaments of this and other lands, not just our own parliament. And we also remember those who hold key positions in the worlds of finance, business, and industry, and. That resonates with me as the cost of living increases. And remember those who care on this day. So, holy God, though this world depends on your grace, it is governed and tended by mortals. So we pray for those who walk the corridors of power in the parliaments of this and other lands, whose judgments we value or fear we can't help but think about our own uk parliament as questions are asked surrounding party gate as we still seek to influence and encourage on the world stage particularly mindful of the war in ukraine and our dealings with russia May they always consider those they represent, make decisions with courage and integrity and resist any and temptation to abuse the trust placed in them. And when I say, Lord, hear us, we respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who hold key positions in the worlds of finance, business and industry, whose decisions may profit some or impoverish many. We pray mindful of businesses that are struggling to remain viable, 
We pray mindful of the increasing cost of living. We pray mindful of particularly the cost of fuel. May they always value people higher than profit. May they never impose burdens on the poor which they would not carry themselves. And may they never divorce money from morality or ownership from stewardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in the caring possessions who look after and listen to kind, cruel and cantankerous folk and for those who make decisions regarding the nation's health and welfare. We pray in particular at this time for our NHS, for all those who work within it and for all those who are cared for by it. We pray particularly mindful of waiting lists. May those who work in the caring professions always sense the sanctity of life and every person's uniqueness. May they help and heal by their interest as well as their skill. And may they be saved from tiredness and an excess of demands. And we give thanks in particular at this time, Lord, for the work of the chaplaincy team at Peterborough City Hospital and across the Trust. Lord, hear us, Lord graciously hear us and let us remember those for whom we are responsible those for whom we are responsible and to whom we are accountable in what we do today may we show to them the thoughtfulness tolerance and kindness of jesus lord hear us lord graciously hear us Lord, hear our prayers, and if today we might be the means by which you answer the prayers for others, then may you find us neither deaf nor defiant, but keen to fulfil your purposes for Jesus' sake. We offer our lives to you this day, and we bring our gifts in different ways, offering use of our time and our resources, but also our finance as well. And we pray, for, we pray mindful of where we have sent our gifts. And we pray that the gifts we bring would be honourable in your sight and would be used for the work of your kingdom. Amen. And as we move uh, forward together, uh, we'll say the Lord's Prayer, shall we, in the usual way. I'll say the beginning line and then... I'll say it quietly myself. I'll end it with a verbal amen, but I'd encourage you to put a comment in the comment section when you've prayed. So, our Father, Amen. Amen. And we close our worship as we listen to Indescribable. And uh, I'll close with a blessing. Although I did notice um, somebody is uh, somebody did say and leave a comment in the comment section during present. They're missing the actions with stars. I'll have to dig that out sometime. I don't have it right now. You know, those end credits that we used to have. Um, no, we'll just be ending with Indescribable and I'll close with a blessing. Uh, thanks for joining us, folks. Don't, don't forget to keep putting those... Put comments in the comments section, particularly uh, to thank those who've made uh, today possible because it's been a big uh, team effort. Uh, so indescribable, enjoy, and then I'll see you at the close for our blessing. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Revealing your majesty From the colors of fall To the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You 
place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God all powerful untamable all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing God who has told every lightning bolt where it should go or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow souls to its light yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night none can fathom indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are We fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim You are amazing, God Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing, God Unchangeable, you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same. You are amazing, God. You are amazing, God. From where we are to where you need us, Jesus, now lead on. From the security of what we know to the adventure of what you will reveal, Jesus, now lead on. To refashion the fabric of this world until it resembles the shape of your kingdom, Jesus, now lead on. Because good things have been prepared. For those who love God, Jesus now lead on. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. It's been wonderful to join with you folks. Take care. Stay safe. And look forward to seeing folks perhaps on Monday for morning prayers. Uh, you know, the, it's about 8.25 for 8.30. A uh, good number gathering together, and you're more than welcome to come along if you uh, if you don't usually have the opportunity. Very welcoming group there, very open, and a real opportunity to start the day grounded in faith. If you're a local preacher, uh, it may well um, be helpful to you to tune in perhaps later if you're not able to tune in earlier in the day, because we do cover uh, the readings for the following Sunday. So it's a good way of, of loading your mind and reflecting before uh, the Sunday. Thanks once again to Nick for uh, the message that he brought today and uh, to David and Madeline uh, for uh, their uh, contribution in uh, reading. Take care folks and, and, and yes last but not least thank you to our admin in the background who uh, is just making sure things flow well and there are no technical problems. So we're going to close by returning to our first hymn, Open Up the Heavens, We Want to See You. Take care, folks. Stay safe.